Okay, so the next charts are for, the next charts are for um, attributes, okay, attribute charts. So let us summarize first the formula. So we have what we call the NP and P charts. Okay, and then we have the C and U charts. So let's start first with the P and NP chart. So for the P charts, the formula is UCL is equal to bar P plus 3 square root of bar P 1 minus P over N. Okay, so that's the formula for the bar P. And then for your CL is just your bar P and the LCL is just the difference of the error. So bar P 1 minus P over N. Okay, let's double check if that's correct. But I believe that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so for the NP chart, for the NP chart, it's just the count of the defective units. So we have the UCL is equal to NP plus 3 square root of NP 1 minus P. Okay. And then for the CL, that's your NP alone. And your LCL or the lower control limit is the subtraction. NP this time, 1 minus Yeah, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so let us save that one. Then for the, if I hope you can, uh, you could catch up lang sa formula, no? This time is for the C and U charts. So for the C and U charts, your UCL, okay, for the C chart, your UCL is equal to um, C plus 3 square root of C. That alone. Okay, or bar C. Yeah, I think there's a bar. But either way, it's the C, then your bar C only. And your LCL is your bar C minus 3 square root of bar C. Okay. And then for your U chart, your U chart is just UCL is equal to U plus 3 square root of bar U over N. Then your CL is your bar U. And your LCL is your bar U minus 3 square root of bar u over n. Okay, so that's it. Those are the formulas. Now, I'm going to save a copy. Now, our next target is what type of chart best suits for each problem? No, because not all charts are applicable for one problem. We already know that X and R Okay, yeah, X and R and X and S will be dependent on the sample size and the sample number of observations. But as for C chart and the U chart, it has the following um, difference, no? Okay. We will only use P e and NP chart if this is for defective units or basically if count count siya all right 
And usually this is in percentage of defective units. We will use C and U chart if it's the number of defects. Okay, and usually they are in numbers. No, they are in numbers and not in percentage. That's why it's P because it's proportion. Proportion defective. Well, the C and U chart are the number of defects. Now, of course, defective units and defects are not the same. Okay, for example, let's say you have three chairs. Okay, chair number one, chair number two, and then chair number three. Now, if I am going to, to put defects in this chair, so maybe this defect has a defect here, defect here, defect here, defect here, and this one, this chair is nalumping yun siya, no? Like it really falls off, but one defect lang siya. Now, question for you guys. Um... How many defects are found in this batch? How many defects are found? How many C are found? Hello? How many defects are found? Five, ma'am. Five, correct. There are five defects found. Now, how many are defective units? Three. Three, okay, question. What is the main purpose of having a chair? The main purpose of having a chair is just to be seated from. This one, malingkuran pa siya. You can sit here, you can also sit here, but this one you cannot anymore because nabali ang one leg. So the only defective unit here is one but it has five defects in that batch so do you agree that if there are uh, that a unit can have uh, many defects but still effective Be pero all units that are defective or uh, has defects of course did you ag do you agree so again how let me repeat a unit may have defects, but it's not defective because it still functions its main role, like, for example, the first two. No? However, if a unit is defective, it sure has defects. Okay? So in this case, if we're going to ask for the C, you have five defects for that batch. But if we were going to ask for the U, we will be getting the average per unit. So here you have two defects, here you have two defects, here you have one defect. So two to a five divided by three, that is how you compute for the U. So meaning to say, it will assume that there are five divided by three, there are 1.667 errors per unit expected. But if C, we will just compute all the all the errors, and then that's the C. While the P is, it will only count the number of defective units. Okay, I hope that's clear, no? So again, the P and NP is only used if it is defective units. Usually, it's in percentage. And then if we're going to do the counting, that's the NP already. Then for C and U chart, it's the count of defects either in numbers for the entire batch or the defects per unit. All right. So I hope we are clear on this. Okay. So let's now try to solve problems. This is an example of a C, uh, P and N P chart. So for the P chart, it's, there you go. For example, a production manager of a tire company has inspected, okay, has ex has inspected the number of defective tires in five random samples with 20 tires in each sample. The table shows the number of defective tires in each sample of 20 tires. Calculate the control limits. Meaning to say, for the first sample, there are 20 tires checked, and in the 20 tires, there are three defective tires. So we we'll say defective talaga, it's not really going to function anymore. So that's 3 out of 20. And then 
for number two, uh, for sample two, there are two tires that are defective in the 20. So when you do P chart, guys, you just have to. Okay, when you do P chart, you get the P of every sample. So in here, for example, now this is sample one, two, three, four, and five. We are getting the proportion defective. This is your P. Okay, so therefore that's three over 20. That's two over 20. That's one over 20. 2 over 20, and 1 over 20. So we get now the P. The P here is 0 0.15, 0 0.10, 0 0.05, and 0 0.10, and 0 0.09. Then in order to get the bar P is the average of all. No? We sum all the P's divided by 5 because there are 5 samples. So in that case, that's actually 9, I sorry, not, not divided by 5, that's 5, no? So, in, in summary, there are 9 defects in 100 samples, so therefore we got, um, on my computer, 0 0.015 plus 0 0.10 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05, that's 0.45. So 0.45 divided by 5 is 0 0.09. So that's your P. So therefore, your P, guys, is actually 0 0.09. Okay? So you now have the value for so let's go now to the formula of the, uh, so that's just how you do the P chart, no? You just have to really be, um, you should know lang how to compute for the P and usually it should be the proportion per batch, okay? Just like what we did with X bar, we got the average first per batch, okay? So this was our given, therefore we go to the problem, uh, to the formula, use, oh, sorry. So, this is for the P-chart first. So, for the P-chart, that's UCL is equal to uh, bar P. Okay, let's remove the lang that one so that we have more space. So, for the UCL, that's... Okay, let's... UCL is equal to bar P plus 3 square root of bar P, 1 minus P, over N. So therefore, your CL is equal to bar P, which is 0 0.09 plus 3 square root of 0 0.09, was it 0 0.09? Okay. Times 1 minus 0 0.09. Now, the question here is, what is the value of N that we're going to use? Are we going to use 20? or 5? What are we going to use? 20 or 5? Guys, what are we going to use? 20 or 5? Again, ha? Huh? Observations. And... There in the here, sige. What do you think? I know it's 20, ma'am. Okay, very good. It should be 20 because 20 because our observ oh, okay, not that one. 20 because our observation is there are 20 samples of tires, right? Per batch. So not the 5. The 5 there is just used for the mean. So diba, it is said here that there are 20 samples per batch. So that's your observation. So therefore, we will use 20. Okay? So going back. Okay, ako na siya. Ay. Okay. So we will use 20. Very good. So that's 20. So how much is the value of your... UCL. So, 
So your UCL now is? So your UCL is 0 0.2819, which is 2.280, no? Okay, or 28.20%. So that's the max allowed defects you, you can for the tires. Your CL is just your 0 0.09, so that's just 9%. Okay, and your LCL is... Just the difference of this, so let's write that, 0 0.09 minus 3 square root of 0 0.09 times 1.0.09 over 20. So how much if it's the difference? Now, if it's negative, guys, negative 0 0.1020, always have zero because there's no negative percentage so your answer should be zero okay always choose the zero one do not do not um do not choose the negative value okay it's always zero now let's choose it's let's do the np chart for the NP chart, there's actually a technique no, for checking later, but sige lang. So for the NP, the N here is still 20, okay? N is always the observations in this matter. So that is for the NP chart. So for the NP is actually 20 times 0 0.09. We need to say there are 1.8 defective units in terms of count, no? So, your UCL then is equal to NP plus 3 square root of NP 1 minus P, right? So, that's 20 times 0.9, no? This is actually the NP now. So, I will just shortcut that. 1.8 plus 3 square root of 1.8 1 minus 0 0.09. So, 1.8 plus 3 square root of 1.8 times 1 minus 0 0.09. That's 5.6395. Okay, that's your UCL for NP. Then for your CL, that's just 1.8 because this is from 20 times 0 0.09, right? That's your N times P. Therefore, the answer is, okay, let's write that decay. Maglibog niya mo. Okay, so UCL is 5.6395. And then for the CL, that's 20 times 0 0.09, which is 1.8. And then your LCL is 0, no? Supposed to be 0. Because if we subtract this one, it's negative 2 point. Yeah, sige. So, atal lang is so what gihapon. So, it's negative 2, 0, 9, 5, or basically 0. So, these are your answers. Now, there's also a checking for that, guys. So, for checking, we can actually multiply, no? The value of your NP is basically... Um, your UCL from the P chart, multiply that by your N. That's actually equal to the UCL of your NP chart. Okay, let's verify. Your UCL is 0 0.282, right? That's 0 0.2820, okay. 0 0.2820 times 20, it should be equal to 5 point. 6395. Are they the same? 0 0.282 times 20. Yes, it's 5.64, no? 5.64. So they're equal. So, of course, obviously, the LCL 
is the same, no? Because we computed it that way. So 0 0.09 also times 20 is actually 1.8. So therefore, that's 1.8 is equal to 1.8. So that's how amazing no, the two the two charts are interconnected to each other. So that's for the P and NP chart. Questions? Okay, so you can use this as a checking, no? Because your UCL in the P, multiply that by N, is actually your answer in the UCL. So if you got that right, meaning you computed it correctly, okay? Question so far, can you type in the chat box? If there are questions short, just like what I showed a while ago, you will just have to, um, you will just have to, wait, 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 wait. There. So this is the C and the U chart. So for the C chart example, the number of weekly customer complaints are monitored in a large hotel using a C chart. Develop the three sigma control limits using the data table below. So for the C chart, guys, you just have to add all regud and then average how many did complain. So for example, here in 10 weeks, there were 22 complaints. So divide lang by 10. That's our, actually already your C chart. So Let's make, let's draw that. Okay. So in here, you, your bar C is equal to um, 22, <clears throat> sorry, 22 complaints over it in 10 weeks. That's 2.2. So therefore, your UCL is equal to 2.2. Okay, wait, let's write that down. Let's, let's write the formula first. So that's bar C plus 3 square root of C, and the easiest to remember. So your UCL then is 2.2 plus 3 square root of 2.2. No? That's how easy it is. So... Where is it? There. Correct. So your UCL is 6.65. Then for your CL, obviously, that's the 2.2. And then your LCL is um, C minus 3 square root of C. So that's um, 2.2 minus 3 square root of 2.2. That's negative 2.25. And again, there is no negative value. So an answer is 0. So these are your answers, 0, 2.2, and 6.65. All right, so you can now draw that in your chart. So actually, they showed the charts here. Oh, the, as you can see, it's almost nearing the center line. That's why it's the process is still in control. Same goes with the control chart. Okay. And then let's now go to the U chart. So for the U chart, guys, let's just get the average um, unit or defects per unit, rather. So for example here, no, as you can see, for the first batch, it has six, six defects. Then it is said that it is a sample of five printed circuit boards. So we need to say per batch, they are actually checking five uh, printed circuit boards. So for the five printed circuit boards, they found six defects. So in order to get the U, that's actually six divided by five. That's why you got 1.2. Four divided by five, that's why it's 0.8. Eight divided by five, that's why it's 1.6. Ten divided by five, that's 2.0. Mean to say, in the fourth batch, it is expected that there are two defects per unit. But of course, that is not the main concern of of C chart. C chart just gets all the defects, but for U chart, it actually gets the average defects per unit. Okay, so that's how we do the U chart. So in this case, it's already solved for us. So let's just use that na lang. So your bar U here is 1.6 actually. No? So he summarized all that 1.2, 0.8, 1.6, 2.0, so on until 2.6 here. 
20 samples, but five observations. So what you're going to use for the N here is the five and not the 20. Again, 20 is just to help you compute for the sample size. So in this case, your U is 1.6, but as you notice, the N here is five because there are five observations. So again, the N should always be the observation. So for the U chart, that's bar U plus three square root of bar u over n. So that's 1.6 plus 3 square root of 1.6 over n, which is 5. Okay, so therefore your UCL is equal to 3.3 and your CL is just the 1.6 and the LCL is uh, bar u minus 3 square root of bar u over n wherein that is um, 1.6 minus 3 square root of 1.6 over 5, which is a negative value, therefore it is 0. So that's your answer, LCL. LCL is 0, CL is 1.6, and the C UCL is 3.3. Okay, so that's how easy it is, guys. So so ma'am. Yes, question. Ma'am, kanang nagibangutan na ba din nagikuha ang three standard na niya nga kwan? Oh yes, um, from the formula. Ah, formula. Na. This one ah, okay. here here. Yes, ma'am. Mm. It's a standard from the formula. Yes. Ah, ah. Because of the three sigma, no? Okay. How about the others? No question. Sige. So now let's go to the so I think I saved this one. I forgot. Sige. Let's now go to the CPK. So this one is the probability accept, um, process capability now. So for the process capability, guys, we are actually computing the CP and the CPK. Okay. So the process capability or the process capability ratio. So for the process capability, what we're going to do is just get the CP. CP is USL minus LSL over 6 sigma hat. Remember in our first part wherein I placed or told you that we have we will have a sigma hat for um, R and S. So remembering, remember that the sigma hat for the R chart is bar R over D2. And for the S is S over C4. So that is how we compute for the sigma hat. Okay. Now what is USL and LSL? USL means upper specification limit. Meaning to say this is according to customers. Um, choice, so lower specification. Specification limit. So when we say upper specification limit, that is how much the client or customer is willing to tolerate. Okay. Well, the lower specification limit is how low ang iyang willing na itolerate. Now, as per the example on that is like this, no? Computing the CP value of cocoa fizz, three bottling machines are being evaluated for possible use at the fizz plant. The machines must be meeting the demand of 15.8 and 16.2. Obviously, your CP is, uh, your USL is 16.2 and your LSL is 15.2. But it could also be in a way na plus minus 0.2, something like that. So if USL, then plus 2. If uh, plus 0.2, if LSL, minus 0.2. Then we just get the sigma hat, and then we will be able to solve it. Now, like just like this, no? for machine A, the sigma is 0 0.05. Your USL is... So we will compute for the machine B and machine C. So... It is already shown, no? the, the formula is already showing the, okay, I'll widen that one. 
So as you can see here, there. Oh, no, no, here. So your UCL minus LSL is already 0.4. Now, how did we get the USL minus LSL? Diba? Naingon siya that the USL is 16.2 ohms, no, based on the given. And then the LSL is 15.08. That's why USL minus LSL is actually 0.4. Okay? So, let's compute for machine B. So, we know already that machine A is 1.33. So, for machine B, so your CP is equal to uh, 0.4 USL minus LSL over 6 sigma, where the sigma of B is 0.1. So, how much is this, guys? 0.4 over 6 times 0.1. 6 is also given, ha? Huh? Because of the six sigma. So two thirds. Pila man ang two thirds. That's basically CP of the machine B is 0.6667. So 66.67% only. Then how about for the CP of the machine C? So for machine C, that CP of C is equal to 0.4 gihapon over 6 times 0.2. One third. It's just nagkagamay, no? So the CP is 0.333. So 33.33%. Therefore, the machine that we are going to use is, of course, machine A. Why? It's beyond 100%. So the concept of the concept of um, the concept of CP guys is for us to determine which machines will give us or is capable, okay, is capable of meeting customer client specifications. So if the CP is equal to one, the process variability just meets specifications. If it's less than one, meaning the process is not capable in producing the specific uh, within specifications. If it's more than, of course, it exceeds the minimal requirements of the customer. So, of course, based on the three machines, obviously, it's only machine A that exceeds customers' expectations. Uh, machine B lacks 0.33% uh, and machine C lacks 0.66% because it has, as you can see also, it has large variation. No? So, we will choose machine A. So that's just how we do the um, var process variability. Okay. And then what else? Yeah. So here it shows that the process is not capable because if the process is more than one, then it is not capable of meeting customer requirements. All right. Okay. Last topic na ta. Are you still there, guys? Okay. Now, for the last topic, our last topic is acceptance sampling. So, for acceptance sampling, okay. For acceptance sampling, um, it is used if we have, um, this is actually used if we want to do sampling before we deliver this to customers. And also we notice na the customers are, are, or it will take rather a lot of time for us to really, um, what do I say? How do I say this one? We use acceptance sampling if we want to determine that these products are already ready for distribution without really doing 100% checking. Okay, that's what I want to say. <laughs> so meaning to say, we just inspect a few and then if the few says it's good, we can now deliver it to customers right away. So that's acceptance sampling. So it's the third branch of SQC, which refers to the process of randomly inspecting a certain number of items 
from a lot or batch in order to decide whether to accept or reject the entire batch. Okay, so it only has two options. Okay, it only has two options. Either we accept it or we reject. The, those are just the two options we need to decide if we do acceptance sampling. It's not okay, sige, dawat lang ni siya, pero, ay, pero no. It's either accept or reject. So, different from SPC because acceptance sampling is performed either before or after the process rather than the during. Unlike in SPC, we are checking also while we're we're doing the task, no? Unlike, unlike acceptance sampling na it's after or before ang process. Okay? Then, yeah, so the goal of acceptance sampling is to determine the criteria for acceptance or rejection based on the size of the lot, the size of the sample, the number of defects. So this is really the decision factor, no, for rejection if there are many defects in that certain lot. But, I believe in your offices, in your in your workplace, you already have a standard for this one, no? And then level of confidence we wish to attain. So maybe 90% confident, 10% confidence, I my 95% confidence and the like. Okay, we have three types of sampling plans, the single, the double, and the multiple. But I'm just gonna teach the single um single sampling plan, okay? And to do that is actually using the OC curve. So the OC curve actually allows us the probability of accepting the lot. So it gives us the percentage that we will accept the lot, okay? The x-axis shows the items that are defective in a lot or the lot quality, while the y-axis shows the probability or chance that we will accept the lot, okay? So for example, in here, you have 90% chance of accepting a lot with 5% defects, 10% chance of accepting the lot with 24 defects. Okay, so there is really a small amount of, of chance that you will accept the lot if it will already have 24 defects. So let's meet the two terms that we will discuss today. The AQL or the average quality, uh, average quality level and the LTPD or lot tolerance percent defective. Okay, that's the two terms. See, AQL is based on you as a customer, as a product producer, meaning that is your average quality level to accept in the business. Well, the LTPD is the tolerance level of your customer based on the defects. That's why it's lot tolerance percent defective. Now, what we're trying to reduce, guys, is really the consumer's risk or the type 2 error. We call that the beta error. So it's like you have... Um, accepted a bad product. That's consumer's risk. So uh, let me write that one. When we say beta or consumer's risk, we accepted a bad product. Or it's like it should have been rejected, but we accepted it. That's the the highest risk because it's like you are accepting that that product na bad quality that might stain our our company's name and all no but because we did mistakenly accept that it affects our performance and the quality that we provide to our customers so that's a beta a consumer's risk while an alpha is like you are rejecting a good product so meaning to say, it could have been a good product, but you rejected it. No? So the risk now is just a producer's risk. You could have saved, but because you did wrong, we call it the type 1 error, and this one is a type 2 error. So the type 2 error is really our um, goal. Na. It will, we will not be able to achieve such defect. Okay, so as to what is the better one here, know all our defects, but better na lang yun si type 1 because we are the only ones affected. Unlike type 2 where the customers are already affected with our 
um, with our um, uh, incorrect, no, incorrect inspection decision. Okay? And then, yeah, we don't need to do the OC curve actually. But, okay. Another example, Ramani. Yeah, so um, hopefully it's here. I can show you the PPT. Yeah, here. There's an acceptance sampling PPT here. Let me share that. So last part na gita. We can start earlier for the makeup class. Okay. So here guys, yes. So acceptance sampling is here no. For example, you have this excerpt no from the one you made na na group and your LTPD over AQL are the following. So C here still represents defects. And then you have N times AQL and the N times LTPD, meaning your producer's risk is 5% and your consumer's risk is... For example, if you're asked, uh, given a producer's risk of 0.5 and an AQL of 0 0.015, Determine a sampling plan. So you will have to determine now your sampling plan. So if you will allow one defect, how many samples will you have to check? So in this case, if you will allow one defect as to how, therefore you will have to compute only, you will look for this value, the 0.355. So ningun man siya, producer's risk 0 0.05 and the C is 1. So you go back to the Okay, you go back to the table. C is 1, so set third row. And then N times AQL is 0 0.355. So 0 0.355 times, or sorry, divide the 0 0.015, that's 24. Meaning, you will only allow one defect per 24 samples. So in the first 24 samples, muduha na ganina siya, the entire lot will be rejected and will have to go through the quality so that the quality will salvage the good the good items. But for, let's say for 4, no, let's go to the table. 4, C is 4, N times AQL, that's 1.97. So 1.97 divided by 0.015, that's 131, meaning you will only allow four errors in 131 batch. Then let's just say, no, the, the first 24 has only one defect. You just get the one, replace it with a good one, and then the batch is good to go. Okay, so the same goes with the number two for LTPD. So this time the risk is 0.1 and the LTPD of 0 0.08. So you go back to the... So C is zero, so you meaning you're not allowing any error. So C is zero, then you look at NLTPD, that's 2.344. So therefore, 2.344 divided by 0 0.0829. So for every 29 items, there should be no defects. So mas stricto si, ano no, si consumer's risk. Same goes with the five, it's 116. So for every 116, you should not... Um, you should not meet more than five defects. Okay? So yeah, I think that's it for oh so